Hi, I'm Mark Hammett, Assistant Forward Coach for the Crusaders. Today we're going to look at the line-out. We're going to look at the technical aspects around the setup, some of the micro detail for our lifters and our jumpers, and a wee bit of troubleshooting for those situations that we can't always fix. Okay, Sammy. Hey, what we want to go through is just the biomechanics of a of a good jump because obviously it's quite different from a um, from if we were if we wanted to say um, touch a basketball hoop. Now, if I wanted to for you biomechanically to do the highest jump possible, how do you think you would do that? Um, starting starting at the bottom, moving up. Probably start a little bit further away, and then uh, start with feet a little bit wider and step into it. And with that step into it, probably then go quite low and then try to use as much uh, power as I can and like with arms going up nice and high. Great, so, so, if we sl so if we slowed it down, we'd be big step, down, really power up. Yeah. yeah. Great, because I think this is a really important thing to, uh, to learn and to know as a, uh, as a line out jumper. What, what this does for me as a, uh, as a defender if my jump is doing this, it gives me trigger points. So as soon as I get a trigger, it means I can go up. So if I'm opposite Sammy and um, and I'm in a nice starting position, just ready to go, and you do, say, a big step, for example, back, that means I can go. Let's say if you used a, um, a big dip this time, Sam, I, I can go. Um, if, we, if you gave me a trigger with your arms, I can go. The key to a, to a good line out jump is trying to narrow those triggers right down. Okay Sammy, the key to getting as much speed as possible and giving me, as a defender, the minimum triggers is to eliminate big body movements. So for me, the probably the, the three areas I want you to look at is firstly your starting alignment so for us that means our feet position okay so here we've got Sam's feet are very very close and on takeoff they won't move it move a lot if we just do a little a little takeoff without the lift bang see there sometimes if you're looking at troubleshooting you may see that so we still start with a small alignment but then we still get that big trigger. So what we're trying to aim for is just off our feet. Just one more, Sam. Lovely. All we're looking for is that much off the ground so that our jumpers, our lifters can get under them. Next, next thing we're really working hard on is the hips. Now if we're looking at this side on, in terms of movement in the hip, we only want a little bit, just a little trigger, is minimum amount. Now, from a troubleshooting point of view, sometimes what you'll find will happen is, is the hips will go down, but the arms stay still, or the arms will go and the hips will stay still. So what we want to do is, is get both of them still, little triggers, and up. Okay, Sammy, if we can just put it all together. And down. Okay, there's two basic outcomes that we want from the line out. One is to deliver the ball off the top to the halfback. The second is to be able to bring it down and create a platform to drive. So what's critical in this is that we get our jumper lifting on a 45 degrees. Sam's gonna show us this now. Great, so that was in slow motion. This, this time semi, I'll, um, I'm just gonna throw the ball up to you and as you're at the top, and you can pass it off to Khan just to, just to show. One, two, down. Well done, man, good.
Okay, as a backlifter, what are you looking to do, Pete? Uh, I'm looking to uh, get a hands on on Sam's backside to uh, just get a feel for where he is. So I'm not I'm not having a look where he is. I can just see out of the corner of my eye and and, and get feel. Now I'm setting up my uh, my front leg just just in front of his heel, and uh, that's going to help me get into the middle more on my finishing position. When I come around. So I just pivot off that one foot. Great. So if you showed me the perfect finish position, where would that be? I'd be bringing Sam round on a 45. And getting him there. Well done. Okay, so bring it back again. <coughs> T tell me the disadvantages of, of setting of his back foot. Well, if uh, Sam's trying to get into, the, get into the 45 and he comes down, I'm sort of going to have to work to get two steps to get round behind Sam. Right. So from there I can just pivot off the one foot where back here I've almost got to take a step and then pivot off, that's, off that front foot. That's brilliant. So if you just step out for a sec, effectively what Pete's saying, on the inside foot it's one movement, off the back it's two movements, one, two, which makes it very difficult for this man to uh, feel secure in the air. From a, from a front lifting point of view, Franksy, what are um, what are some of the key key points for you? Really I just want to have a strong base so I can take the, the weight of the of the jumper but also I don't want to be taking away his space so just having a tall chest and just sitting back in a strong position so they can come as close to the five as possible. Great. And Frank raises a really good point. Can we go into the, the space stealing position? This is, this is a position we, we see a lot. First thing Sammy's had to do is move back. Now if Sammy jumps straight up without those, without those feet moving and Franksy was to stand up, that distance there, Franksy will end up having to lift on what sort of angle, Franksy? Like that? Yeah, on an angle, my hands are out. So as soon as we're lifting out on an angle, then we're losing that ability to get our jumper even further up in the air. Okay, frankly, from a from a perfect grip point of view, where do you like to take your grip? Just above the knee is ideal for me. I can use in around his muscles as grip, and my hand grip is just a neutral position. Great. So when you're talking about neutral, wrists aren't broken or bent. No, just in a, in a just in a nice natural position. Thumbs and fingers around the outside of his thigh and just keeping the elbows in tight so they don't splay out so you don't lose any power with the elbows going out nice and straight. Great, so strong elbows. The other key thing that we do particularly with Canterbury Rugby is we try to, um, we always wear either lifting pads or we tape them for game situations which gives us a good visual from a uh, lifting point of view of exactly where we want to lift. Also good in wet weather. Okay, if we just peel it back a wee bit more, Pete, from a back lifter's point of view, what's key? I've got my uh, my guide hand on his on his outside cheek, and basically it's just un just under his ass cheek. So I've just like Ben, I've got a good neutral grip with my wrist locked, and then when Sam goes to jump, I pivot off that leg and I'm driving up under his right cheek. With the same, with the same neutral position and driving up. And, uh, yeah. Great. And keep in mind, with all like all lineouts, it's a power exercise. So it's split second. So once the movement starts, bang, we're going. Pete and Frankie have both introduced their uh, their grip positions. So what we're going to do, just to test that, we're just going to get them to hold Sam up in the air for a couple of seconds. So when you're ready, guys. One, two, down.
Okay, this is a good warm up drill. What we're really looking for on this is, is a small ticks, straight legs and pointed toes. Um, this is also very good for delivery, so we're looking for straight arms as well. There's a, a lot to remember and very good drill to video if you're a coach trying to uh, analyse a player's strengths and weaknesses come line out time. Well done, just keep those legs together, Poppy. That's, that's good, George. Well done. As an extension to the drill, just to emphasise the 45 as we jump, we use our outside arm only, so we'll lock our inside arm in, and we have to jump with the inside arm through the outside arm. If the outside arm, if we don't have the 45, and we're using our outside arm, we're going to tip. So that's a uh, that's a giveaway from a coaching perspective. Get on the 45, and we still use that outside arm, and we should better maintain balance through the middle. That's great, George. Okay. From a troubleshooting perspective, one thing we see as coaches sometimes is a is a really good lift, good takeoff, um, nice arms, all the uh, all the ticks are in place, but we're still struggling. We we see our uh, our lifters bottom out. And putting extreme pressure on the on the back lifter. A good way of fixing this is just to get our players to lock their toes. It um, effectively like puts a rod right up through their body, and it keeps them stiff in the air. And George will give us a good example of this now. Okay, this is a demonstration of when our toes aren't pointed and, and what it can do to the back lifter. Okay, we're going to do a drill here where um, it's just a test. These guys, their, their understanding, I want to put a wee bit of pressure on them, obviously in a line out we have pressure from the opposition moving, running around, yet when it's our ball we get to say go. So I'm going to stand behind these guys, on my clap, it's a, it's a race to see who can get in the air the quickest. And down. And down. Great. Okay, guys, best of three. Oh, I'll get down. Yeah. I'll give it to the left group because they had a better 45 degree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are we ready for the next one? Down. Right group. Okay, winner takes all. And down. I think I'll give it to this group for a steadier lift. Well done, me. Okay, this is a great drill to do. Nice and easy. Do it at the end of the training. It's just about straight arm delivery. Um, often we catch a ball at full height at what we call it call a 10 up here in a great position to deliver that's great but what we do see on occasion which then brings the opposition into play is a lock will catch it try to deliver 
and have it stolen from there. So this drill's just about catching in a fairly friendly environment with someone in behind trying to uh, take it off him if he does bring it back. This guy here is just to offer a wee bit of resistance sometimes in the air, just to give a wee bit of uh, bit of rough and tumble, just to make sure that the core's nice and strong. Well done, Joe. Okay, this drill is just to uh, to be competitive, to have a bit of fun, but to also increase that speed of delivery to our halfbacks. So what we'll have here, Joe will start, we've got two hookers. Um, Joe, when he goes, Sammy is then allowed to go, and it's whoever delivers to the halfback quickest. Obviously, Joey should win if he gets to say go, but this is where the competition part of it comes in. Okay, boys. to Joe. Point to Joe. Okay, now it'll be Sammy's ball. Wee bit closer. Well done. And good skills on the air, Joe. Well done. Okay, this drill here is to stress the importance of speed, and that speed will, will always beat um, our opposition. Okay, um, when in this drill where we set up, we'll set up with the D in front. That should give the impression that these guys have the advantage. If we get our throw height right, in other words, nine tens and elevens, this team should win, given our um, our alignment, our small ticks, and our and our lifting techniques correct. Okay, we'll have two each. Great speed, please make sure we finish the lift. Well done, let's swap over. That's an 11, that's good T, we prefer that.